The Dawn of Powered Flight. This is a story that begins at 221 South Williams Street, in a humble bicycle shop in Dayton, Ohio. The year was 1903, and two brothers would change the course of human history with an engine that seems almost primitive by today's standards. Four cylinders, 12 horsepower, weighing exactly 180 pounds. Orville and Wilbur Wright machined it themselves, creating humanity's first successful aircraft engine out of aluminum alloy, a material virtually unused in engines at that time. From these modest beginnings, piston engines evolved into three distinct champions of the sky. The horizontally opposed engine emerged first. Mastered by Lycoming and Continental in the 1940s, their crowning achievement was the O320 series. This 160-horsepower marvel drove the Cessna 172 to become aviation's greatest success story, with over 44,000 built. The O320's reliability was legendary, 2,000 hours between overhauls, with some engines logging over 40,000 hours in flight schools and training facilities. But when raw power was needed, the radial engine answered the call. The Pratt & Whitney R2800 double wasp, with its massive 18 cylinders arranged like a star, generated an earth-shaking 2,000 horsepower. This behemoth powered 86,000 aircraft during World War II. A single R2800 could drive the F6F Hellcat to heights of 37,000 feet, helping these fighters achieve a remarkable 19 to 1 kill ratio against Japanese aircraft in the Pacific. The inline engine completed this trinity, epitomized by the Rolls-Royce Merlin V12, producing up to 1,650 horsepower. Its distinctive scream became the sound of Britain's survival. The Merlin transformed the P-51 Mustang from an average fighter into a legend, enabling it to escort bombers all the way to Berlin and back, a game-changing capability that helped secure Allied air superiority. However, the evolution of the engine didn't end there. The Jet Age Revolution. In the shadow of World War II, two brilliant minds were about to revolutionize aviation forever. In Lutterworth, England, a 32-year-old RAF officer named Frank Whittle labored in a tiny workshop with a team of just five people. Meanwhile, in Göttingen, Germany, 27-year-old Hans von Ohain worked with the backing of Ernst Heinkel's aircraft company. Neither knew of the other's existence, yet both were racing toward the same revolutionary goal, the jet engine. Their early engines were pure turbojets. Imagine a fire-breathing dragon compressed into a metal tube. Air would rush in, get squeezed tight, mix with fuel, ignite, and blast out the back with explosive force. Whittle's first engine, the W-1, tested in April 1937, was a technological marvel that spun at 17,750 RPM and generated 1,240 pounds of thrust. But at what cost? The temperatures inside reached 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, literally melting the combustion chambers during testing. Whittle Whittle's team had to invent new metals just to keep their dream alive. The race for jet power reached its first milestone when von Ohain's Heinkel Strahl Tree Burka 3B engine powered the historic Heinkel He-178 flight on August 27, 1939 just days before World War II erupted. While it proved jet propulsion was possible, these early engines were far from practical. The German M262, the world's first operational jet fighter, could only fly for 60 minutes before running dry, and its engines needed replacement after just 10 to 25 hours of operation. Then came the breakthrough that would transform aviation forever, the turbofan revolution. Engineers had a brilliant idea. What if we could harness more power without burning more fuel? Picture a modern jet engine like a highway with two lanes. When air hits the massive front fan, most of it takes the outer express lane around the engine's hot core. That's called bypass air. Only a smaller portion takes the local lane through the core, where it's compressed, mixed with fuel, and ignited. This ratio between the express and local lanes, the bypass ratio, became the magic number in jet engine design. The first turbofans of the 1960s had a modest 2.1 ratio. The JT-9D engines, powering the Boeing 747 in 1969, improved to 5 to 1. Today's GE-9X engine achieves an incredible 10 to 1 ratio, moving over 8,000 pounds of air every second, enough to fill three houses. Each of its fan blades can withstand 89 tons of force, yet weighs less than three car tires. The evolution in power has been staggering. The GE-9150 B, certified in 2002, generates 127 7,900 pounds of thrust, more than all the engines combined on a World War II B-29 bomber, B-17 Flying Fortress, and P-51 Mustang. A single modern engine creates more power than an entire squadron of World War II fighters.
but raw power isn't everything in aviation. For shorter routes and military transport, engineers created a hybrid solution, the turboprop. By combining the reliability of jet engines with the efficiency of propellers, the Pratt & Whitney PT-6 became aviation's greatest workhorse. Since 1964, over 51,000 units have been produced in 127 different versions, accumulating more than 500 million flight hours. That's over 57,000 years of continuous operation. These engines proved their worth in every corner of the globe. The military C-130 Hercules, powered by four mighty Allison T-56 turboprops, can operate from rough dirt strips in the Arctic or scorching desert runways. The Europrop TP-400, the most powerful turboprop ever built, can lift the 141-ton Airbus A400M military transport into the sky with ease. Today's engines are technological masterpieces. They use exotic materials like ceramic matrix composites that can withstand temperatures higher than lava. A single crystal turbine blade smaller than your hand generates more power than a Formula One racing car. The Rolls-Royce Trent XWB, powering the Airbus A350, achieves a mind-boggling 97,000 pounds of thrust with unprecedented reliability. But the jet age isn't over. It's evolving. The next generation of engines promises even greater revolutions. Specialized designs. In 1951, when Igor Sikorsky perfected vertical flight, he faced an extraordinary challenge, creating an engine powerful enough for practical helicopter operations, yet light enough to lift its own weight. The solution came in the form of the turboshaft engine. Imagine a jet engine redesigned with a singular purpose. Instead of thrusting forward, it channels all its energy into spinning a shaft with incredible efficiency. The General Electric T700, introduced in 1976, exemplifies this brilliant in engineering. At its heart, compressed air mixes with atomized jet fuel at temperatures reaching 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit, driving a series of turbine wheels that transfer 2,000 horsepower to the main rotor shaft, all while weighing just 450 pounds. This powerhouse keeps the Black Hawk helicopter airborne in the harshest conditions, from desert sandstorms to Arctic blizzards. Even more impressive, it can survive 23mm anti-aircraft hits and keep running, demonstrating a remarkable 99.8% availability rate in combat operations. The Rolls-Royce M250 took this technology to commercial heights. Its genius lies in the modular design, five sections that can be individually maintained, with air flowing through an innovative six-stage axial and single-stage centrifugal compressor. Since 1963, over 31,000 M250 engines have powered everything from news helicopters to medical evacuation aircraft, some logging more than 50,000 flight hours, equivalent to flying non-stop for nearly six years. But some aircraft needed to fly faster than any conventional engine could manage. Enter the ramjet, an engine so simple it has no moving parts, yet so complex it only works at supersonic speeds. The principle is deceptively elegant. At high speeds, the natural compression of incoming air becomes so intense that traditional compressors become unnecessary. The SR-71 Blackbird's Pratt & Whitney J-58 engines showcase this technology's ultimate potential. Above Mach 3, shock waves formed by the spike-shaped inlet cone compress the air to 140 psi before it even reached the engine. The variable position inlet cones automatically adjusted to capture these shock waves optimally, resulting in inlet temperatures of 800 degree Fahrenheit and an exhaust glow visible from 30 miles away. Each engine produced 34,000 pounds of thrust while consuming fuel at an astounding 8,000 gallons per hour. Today's scramjet technology pushes these boundaries even further. Unlike ramjets, which slow incoming air to subsonic speeds before combustion, scramjets maintain supersonic airflow throughout the entire engine. The NASA X-43A demonstrated this capability spectacularly, reaching Mach 9.6, nearly 7,000 miles per hour. The Boeing X-51 Waverider further proved the technology's viability, using its entire airframe to compress incoming air and sustain sustaining Mach 5 flight for over three minutes. Inside these engines, JP-7 fuel burns an airflow moving at over 4,000 miles per hour, with combustion occurring in less than one thousandth of a second at temperatures reaching 4,000 degree Fahrenheit. Current research programs push even further. The DARPA Lockheed Martin SR-72 program aims for Mach 6 by 2025, while China's Fatian-1 scramjet system has reportedly achieved sustained Mach 4.5 flight for 600 seconds.
experience. Each breakthrough brings us closer to hypersonic aircraft capable of reaching any point on Earth within two hours. These specialized engines represent the pinnacle of purpose-built design. From the precise power control needed for helicopter rescue missions to the extreme physics of hypersonic flight, each innovation opens new frontiers in our relentless pursuit of mastering the skies. A green revolution. In the skies above Washington State in 2019, something remarkable happened. A modified Cessna Grand Caravan, powered by Magnix's 750-horsepower electric motor, took flight in near silence. This historic moment marked the beginning of aviation's greatest transformation since the jet age. The Magnix engine produced zero emissions while delivering 93% efficiency, compared to just 30% in traditional aircraft engines. Harbor Air, North America's largest seaplane operator, is converting its entire fleet to electric power. Using Magnix's Magni 500 system, these aircraft will carry passengers up to 100 miles while cutting operating costs by 80%. Meanwhile, Pupistrel's Velis Electro became the world's first certified electric aircraft in 2020, proving that electric aviation isn't just possible, it's here. Rolls-Royce's innovative spirit of innovation demonstrated the raw potential of electric flight, shattering speed records at 387.4 miles per hour. But for larger aircraft, hybrid systems offer the perfect compromise. The company's EFAN X demonstrator paired a 2.5 megawatt electric motor with a traditional turbine engine, creating a system that could power a 100-passenger regional airliner. Airbus is pioneering distributed electric propulsion, where multiple small electric motors replace traditional engines. Their City Airbus NextGen uses eight electric motors to achieve vertical takeoff and landing, promising zero-emission urban air mobility. United Airlines has already committed to purchasing up to 200 similar electric aircraft from Archer Aviation. Perhaps most revolutionary is the promise of hydrogen power. Zero Avia's hydrogen fuel cell system has already powered a 19-seat aircraft in test flights, with plans for commercial operations by 2025. Unlike batteries, hydrogen offers energy density close to traditional jet fuel while producing only water as exhaust. Airbus's zero-concept aircraft, planned for 2035, will use liquid hydrogen in modified gas turbine engines. The company is developing three distinct designs, a turboprop for regional routes, a narrow-body airliner for shorter flights, and a blended wing design that integrates hydrogen storage into its revolutionary airframe. This revolution faces significant hurdles. Current battery technology limits range to about 500 miles for small aircraft. Hydrogen requires entirely new infrastructure, special tanks, fueling systems, and safety protocols. The certification process for these new technologies is complex and time-consuming. But the potential rewards are enormous. By 2050, aviation must reduce its carbon footprint by 80% to meet global climate goals. Electric and hydrogen aircraft don't just offer zero emissions. They promise quieter flight, lower operating costs, and simplified maintenance. United Airlines estimates that electric aircraft could reduce connection costs on short routes by up to 50%. By 2040, the skies above our cities could be filled with electric air taxis, while hydrogen-powered airliners cross continents without producing a single gram of carbon dioxide. The future of flight isn't just about going faster or higher, it's about flying smarter, cleaner, and more efficiently than ever before. The next chapter of flight. In the heart of our cities, a new revolution in aviation is taking shape. Imagine looking up to see sleek aircraft rising vertically from rooftops, powered by multiple ducted fans whirring in near silence. This isn't science fiction. It's the emerging world of urban air mobility, where engineering meets imagination. The story of ducted fans began in the 1960s with the experimental Bell X-22, but today's electric revolution has given this technology new life. Joby Aviation's remarkable aircraft uses six tilting ducted fans to achieve something unprecedented, vertical takeoff with the efficiency of winged flight. Their design shrouds each propeller in a carefully engineered duct, increasing thrust by 30% while reducing noise to near whisper levels. Lilium's pioneering aircraft takes this concept further, employing 36 ducted fans embedded in its wing flaps. This distributed electric propulsion system allows for incredible redundancy. The aircraft can safely complete its mission even if several motors fail. During testing, the aircraft demonstrated noise levels four times quieter than a helicopter at takeoff. Meanwhile, an almost forgotten innovation from the 1980s is finding new relevance. 
The prop fan, pioneered by General Electric's GE36 engine, represented a radical departure from conventional designs. Picture a turbofan engine stripped of its outer casing, with two rows of scimitar-shaped blades rotating in opposite directions. The GE36 achieved a remarkable 30% reduction in fuel consumption compared to traditional turbofans. Though never commercialized due to falling oil prices and noise concerns, the prop fan's principles are influencing modern designs. CFM International's RISE program incorporates elements of the prop fan concept in its quest for next-generation efficiency. Their open fan design promises a 20% reduction in fuel consumption while meeting modern noise requirements. The convergence of these technologies is creating new possibilities. Beta Technologies' Alia aircraft combines ducted electric propulsion with a prop fan-inspired lift system. The result is an aircraft that can transport 1,500 pounds of cargo, over 250 miles, while producing zero emissions. UPS has already ordered 150 of these revolutionary aircraft. We're witnessing the birth of a new aviation ecosystem. Companies like Archer, Volocopter, and Vertical Aerospace are bringing these technologies to market. By 2025, the first commercial EV tall services will begin in major cities. Dubai plans to have 20% of its urban transport operating with these aircraft by 2030. The impact extends beyond passenger transport. Autonomous cargo drones using ducted electric propulsion are already delivering medical supplies to remote areas. Amazon and Google are developing similar systems for urban package delivery. The technology that began as an experiment is becoming an integral part of our transportation future. From the Wright Brothers' first engine to tomorrow's electric aircraft, each design represents a solution to the challenges of its era. Whether winning wars, connecting continents, or fighting climate change, each breakthrough, from piston to jet, turbofan to scramjet, and now to electric and hydrogen power, represents not just technological achievement, but our relentless drive to reach higher, fly faster, and journey farther.